Blessed be our God. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so merit was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told, them they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground, he had no former majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a, a man of suffering and acquainted with his infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried out our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed of our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before his shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken from the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering of sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find his satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured his, out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession of the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. O oh my God, I cry out in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One. Enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. Scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb. And kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. 
You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me. Like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. My wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All of you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him, my descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. A reading from the letters to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit testifies, saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Truly I tell you, 
Today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, here is your son, here is your mother. Woman, here is your son, here is your mother. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I am thirsty. I am thirsty. It is finished. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit.
The crucifixion of Jesus is such a horrific and cruel thing to ponder on Good Friday in, in, in a world that still suffers much in the same way that Jesus suffered on the cross. Uh, we are still rife with poverty. Uh, there are places that torture. Um, there are people who are starving. There are people who are trying to flee oppressive governments and regimes. Uh, and there, there are people uh, in our midst who are um, living under the condition of homelessness. Um, there are others in our midst who are suffering from abuse. It's still a very, very cruel world. Uh, we, um, we hear a line in, in the Gospels that says, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, how did Jesus feel on that cross in the last three hours of his life? Um, there, there, are, there are people who posit, well, no, he didn't really believe that God had abandoned him. Uh, that that uh, when he said that line from the psalm, he was saying one line on behalf of the entire psalm, just like when we say, the Lord is my shepherd, we're saying the entire psalm, even though we can only remember one line, and uh, that in his agony on the cross, that was all he could muster to, to verbalize. And then there are others who say no, uh, that to, to really uh, feel and experience the human condition fully, that uh, he would have truly had to felt abandoned by his father. Uh, what the truth is, uh, we, we don't know. That's part of the mystery of Good Friday. That's part of the mystery of our faith. But I think that if he really did feel abandoned, and we know how much he was suffering, that in addition to that suffering, if he really did feel abandoned, then it's incumbent upon us as disciples of Christ not to just remember the story, but to fold time in our prayers. Um, and go back in time with Jesus and spend time with him as he is on the cross, praying for him, comforting him, extending compassion to him in order to relieve a bit of that suffering and in order to uh, help him understand that no, he was not completely abandoned. We are there for him the way he is there for us and the way that he relieves our suffering. And I think that if we can do that for the God of our understanding who is hanging on the cross, then we can extrapolate that into the rest of our daily lives and go out into the world and really work to relieve the suffering of others and to be present with others so that they do not feel abandoned. I think that if we can do that, then the suffering that Jesus goes through on the cross, the feeling of abandonment that he may feel, will have meaning to it. Uh, not only meaning for him, but also meaning for us and meaning for the people uh, to whom we're called to minister and serve. So uh, as Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, may we, through our prayers and through our times of meditation and through our ministration to others, be able to say to Christ, no, God has not abandoned you, and we have not abandoned you. We will be with you on this cross, and we will venerate the cross, remembering all that you did for us and feeling our call to live into all that we can do for you and your people. Jesus, remember
Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved, that all who believe in Him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with Him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for Robert, our bishop, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, for those about to be baptized, particularly Aleva, Jayan, Keha, and Aidan Bueno, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth, and for those in authority among them, for Joseph, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, Kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your do dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or mind for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ, for those who have never heard the word of salvation, 
for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not yet heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably upon your whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery, by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross. Behold the wood of the cross. Behold the wood of the cross.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church peace and concord, and to us sinners everlasting life and glory, for with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.